okay guys let's start our today's topic so we are discussing a digestive system we have discussed mouth esophagus stomach then we were discussing about the small intestine i told you in the last lecture that small intestine are divided into three parts duodenum jejunum and ileum so let us have a look at this duodenum first duodenum as i told you last time that this duodenum it is somewhat u shaped part u shaped or some call it as c shaped part c shaped small part this duodenum it measures just some 25 cm in length cm in length it has a diameter of diameter of 24.9 mm so it is short and wide it is short and wide so what is the main function of this duodenum this duodenum it receives it receives hepatopancreatic duct hepatopancreatic duct in it so just over the duodenum there is the liver so you know from liver arise the ducts right hepatic duct left hepatic duct these ducts combine they form common hepatic duct in this common hepatic duct it combines with the duct of gallbladder and it forms the common bile duct so this is the right right lobe of liver so this is right hepatic duct right hepatic duct this is left hepatic duct left hepatic duct these two hepatic ducts they combine they form common hepatic duct common hepatic duct this is the gallbladder here from this gallbladder arises a duct known as cystic duct then this cystic duct and common hepatic duct they join they form common bile duct they form common bile duct then this common bile duct unites with the duct of pancreas pancreas is a leaf like gland right so this is pancreatic duct this is pancreatic duct pancreatic duct so common bile duct it unites unites with the pancreatic duct and it forms a hepatopancreatic duct this is the hepatopancreatic duct hepatopancreatic duct and this hepatopancreatic duct it dilates before opening into the duodenum this dilation of hepatopancreatic duct it is known as ampulla of water it is known as ampulla of water and through this ampulla of water this hepatopancreatic duct it opens into the duodenum it opens into duodenum so an opening which is guarded by a sphincter this sphincter is known as sphincter of odin sphincter of odin so duodenum is the first u shaped or somewhat c shaped part 
of the small intestine. This duodenum it receives bile and pancreas from liver and pancreas. Bile and, it receives bile and pancreatic juice from liver and pancreas. Duodenum it receives bile and pancreatic juice from liver and pancreas. So it receives this bile and pancreatic juice from liver and pancreas through a duct known as hepatopancreatic duct. And before this hepatopancreatic duct opens into the duodenum, it first dilates a bit. It forms an ampulla-like structure. This ampulla is known as ampulla of water. And this ampulla of water, where it opens into duodenum, its opening is guarded by a sphincter valve. Sphincter, as I told you, it is a circular band of muscles which closes an aperture or which opens an aperture, right? So this circular band of muscles, which regulates the flow of bile and pancreatic juice into duodenum, this sphincter muscle is known as sphincter of body. So through this sphincter of body, bile and pancreatic juice is released into duodenum. So duodenum receives bile and pancreatic juice from liver and pancreas through hepatopancreatic duct, through ampulla of water, and then through sphincter of body, right? So this is the first part of the small intestine, which is somewhat C-shaped or U-shaped, and it receives the digestive juices from liver and pancreas. So you can see in this diagram, from liver, our liver is four-lobed, but there are two major lobes, the right liver, the right lobe and the left lobe. Then there are two more small lobes, they are just under this right lobe. They are known as caudate lobe and caudate, quadrate lobe. Caudate and quadrate. Quadrate lobe, right? So there are two ducts arise from liver. Right hepatic duct and left hepatic duct. These two ducts, they unite, they form common hepatic duct. Then this common hepatic duct, it joins with the duct of gallbladder, known as cystic duct. So common hepatic duct and cystic duct, they, they join together. They form common bile duct. Then this common bile duct runs downwards and it unites with the ducts of pancreas. There are many small ducts. They unite with the common bile duct and they form a common duct known as hepatopancreatic duct. This is hepatopancreatic duct. Then this hepatopancreatic duct, before opening into duodenum, it dilates a bit, it forms an ampulla-like structure, that ampulla is known as ampulla of water. And this ampulla of water, it opens into duodenum through a sphincter valve, known as sphincter of body, right? At the base of common bile duct, there is another sphincter. This is known as sphincter of voidum. This sphincter, which is present at the base of common bile duct. It is known as sphincter of boydin. Sphincter of boydin. Boydin. It regulates the amount of bile released into hepatopancreatic duct, right? So, first part of the small intestine, duodenum, it receives bile and pancreas from these ducts, through these ducts, right? This duodenum it is internal surface, it is luminal surface, as I told you yesterday. It is drawn into irregular folds which bear villi on them. The luminal surface of duodenum is having villi on it. You know, the role of small intestine. What is the role of small intestine? Small intestine is mainly meant for digestion, digestion and absorption of food. And absorption of food. So to enhance the absorptive surface of small intestine, the internal luminal surface of small intestine. This is the lumen of small intestine. The luminal surface of small intestine 
it is drawn into small finger like structures or tongue like structures or leaf like structures they are known as will like they are known as will like so these will like they enhance absorb to surface of the small intestine so in duodenum we find there are leaf like will like on it is luminal surface on it is luminal surface there are leaf like will like on the luminal surface of duodenum there are some leaf like will like these leaf like will like they enhance the absorptive surface of duodenum so these will like they are leaf like they are leaf like so in duodenum bile and pancreatic juice is released so bile is involved in emulsification of fats bile doesn't contain any digestive enzymes pancreatic juice contains pancreatic amylase pancreatic this uh, lipase and pancreatic juice also contains proteases so in duodenum there is mostly digestion of starch digestion of fats and digestion of some proteins right so some of the digestion of proteins starches and fats that also occurs in duodenum by the help of bile and pancreatic juice right so pancreatic amylase pancreatic lipase or pancreatic protease they mostly work in duodenum so after digestion the food passes into from duodenum the food goes into jejunum and ileum right so we will see the we will discuss about jejunum and ileum most of the digestion and absorption most of digestion and absorption of food absorption of food occurs in jejunum and jejunum and ileum most of the digestion and absorption of food occurs in jejunum and ileum so this jejunum it is some 2.4 meter in length while well as ileum is some 3.6 meter in length so they are lengthy structures the luminal surface of this jejunum it has also got villi for absorption of food so those villi they are somewhat tongue shaped they are somewhat tongue shaped these villi are somewhat tongue shaped in jejunum we find also villi which are supplied with blood vessels and these villi they are somewhat tongue shaped they are tongue shaped if we look at the ileum in ileum there are also villi but those villi are somewhat finger like these villi of ileum they are somewhat finger like they are longer but they are thinner so they are somewhat finger like so these villi of the ileum they are finger like so we can recognize these three parts of small intestine by their villi in duodenum there are leaf like villi in jejunum there are tongue shaped villi in ileum there are finger like villi in all these parts duodenum jejunum and ileum digestion and absorption of food occurs so small intestine is mainly meant for digestion and absorption of food right then this small intestine it is followed by large intestine so i would like to draw the diagram first i would like to show you in diagram where this small intestine and large intestine are and how they appear in the diagram so i would like to draw a diagram first
כאן. I have a small board. I am not able to draw a large diagram. I will try to draw a smaller diagram. I cannot draw the diagram here. We represent coiling of the small intestine like this in the diagram. Small intestine is a highly coiled structure, and we are representing the coiling in this diagram like this. This is a diagrammatic representation of the coiling of the small intestine. So we were discussing about the small intestine. So as I told you, the first part of small intestine, which is somewhat U-shaped or C-shaped. So some authors call this shape as C, and some authors call this shape because it rises a bit upwards. This duodenum first rises a bit upwards, then it descends downwards. Again. So for that reason, some authors call it as a U shape. So this is the duodenum. This is the duodenum. So you can see it is somewhat C shaped, or some authors call it as a U shape because it rises upwards again. Then it descends down, right? So just in close proximity of this duodenum, there is the liver. So as I told you just now that from liver, the ducts arise, the gallbladder here, then it, we have got pancreas in this room, so the leaf like gland, this leaf like gland is known as pancreas, then duct from pancreas and liver they combine. Which then opens into the venom. Right. So this first part is the duodenum. Then this duodenum is followed by jejunum. And jejunum is followed by ileum. So there is no clear demarcation between jejunum and ileum. However, jejunum is slightly wider than ileum. As I told you, duodenum is some 24.9 millimeter, 24.9 millimeter in diameter. Jejunum it is some 24.5 millimeter in diameter, and ileum is some 19.5 millimeter in diameter. Right? So they vary in their diameter. Duodenum is the broadest 24.9 millimeter diameter. Jejunum, it is smaller in diameter. 
24.5 mm and ilium is still smaller 19.5 mm in diameter so we can clearly differentiate between duodenum and the remaining part of small intestine because duodenum is short and broad and somewhat c or u shaped after that starts jejunum and ileum we are not able to clearly demarcate we are not able to clearly differentiate between jejunum and ileum externally however we can internally easily recognize three these three different regions of small intestine in duodenum we will find deep like villi in jejunum we will find so in duodenum we will find leaf like villi in jejunum we will find tongue like villi and in ileum we will find those finger like villi right then you can see in the diagram this ileum it joins with the large intestine and at the junction of ileum and large intestine it is guarded by another gram that is known as ileo cecum well or sometimes it is also known as ileo colic well ileo colic well so this ileo cecal well or ileo colic well it doesn't allow the food material it doesn't allow the undigested food material to enter back from colon into small intestine so it guards the movement of food from small intestine into large intestine then it doesn't allow this undigested food material to go back from large intestine into small intestine right so these are the three different regions of small intestine which i have shown you in the diagram so you know this is esophagus this is esophagus this is stomach this is liver right this is pancreas this leaf like gland which is present over here it is known as pancreas then after small intestine starts the large intestine the colon so colon starts from here the first part of colon is a small pouch like structure this is known as cecum it is known as cecum just below the cecum there is a small finger like structure this is known as vermiform appendix vermiform appendix we can simply call it as appendix but in scientific literature it is referred to as vermiform appendix because it is worm like right so the point where small intestine joins with the large intestine is guarded by a valve that valve is known as ileocecal valve or ileocolic valve after ileo ileocolic valve there is a small pouch like structure this small pouch like structure is known as cecum right so this is the first part of the colon and at the base of this cecum there is a small finger like some 9 cm long this would be form appendix may be some 9 cm long some 9 cm long small finger like structure this is known as vermiform appendix this vermiform appendix it is considered as a vestigial organ but some authors don't agree on it they say that it harbors some useful symbiotic bacteria and it and it also contains mucosa associated sorry gut associated lymphoid tissue in it it also contains lymphoid lymphoid tissue in it that lymphoid tissue contains lymphocytes those lymphocytes they provide us immunity so authors say that this limb appendix it has a role in one's immunity and it also maintains the flora of our gut it contains some useful symbiotic bacteria sometimes we take antibiotics we suffer from diarrhea we suffer from cholera right at that time our useful symbiotic bacteria are flushed out from our gut so some useful symbiotic bacteria they reside in vermiform appendix which are not flushed out then they restore restore the flora of the useful flora of the bacterial flora of the gut right so they maintain the useful bacteria of our gut right so that is the function of vermiform appendix then after this there is a cecum small pouch like structure this small pouch like structure cecum it is mostly concerned with reabsorption of water and salts it reabsorbs water and salts from undigested food materials small intestine is the site of digestion and absorption 
So all the digestion and absorption occurs in small intestine. Then undigested food materials, they leave the small intestine and they enter into large intestine, right? So these undigested food materials which enter into large intestine, they are mostly the wastes. So cecum absorbs some water and mineral salts from this undigested food material. And it, it is wall is internally lined by mucosa. So that mucosa releases mucus, which lubricates this undigested food material, right? So that helps us in the movement of that undigested food material through the colon, right? So that is the function of this cecum. Then this cecum, it gives rise to, from it arises the ascending colon. So this part of colon, you know our colon, it is 1.5 meter long. Our colon is 1.5 meter long. So first, the colon rises upwards on the right side of our abdomen. So this part of the colon, which rises upwards on the right side of the abdomen, this is known as ascending colon. This is our ascending colon. Then this colon makes a turn and goes towards the left side of the body. It makes a turn and goes towards the left side of the body, right? So this part of colon, which takes a turn just at the level of liver, this part of colon is known as transverse colon. This is transverse colon. Then at the level of spleen, this colon descends down. So from the liver, it goes towards the spleen, right? So at the level of spleen, it starts descending down. So this part of colon, which descends down, this is known as descending colon. Descending colon. Then this colon makes somewhat S shaped turn. This colon makes a somewhat S-shaped turn. And this S-shaped part of colon, it is known as sigmoid colon. It is known as sigmoid colon. It enters into pelvic girdle, right? Then from this sigmoid colon arises a small tube-like canal known as rectum. And then this rectum opens to the outside to an ends. And ends. So this is the diagram of our elementary canal. This is the diagram of our elementary canal. So our elementary canal it starts from the mouth. Then this mouth is followed by oral cavity or buccal cavity. Buccal cavity is followed by pharynx. Pharynx is followed by esophagus. Esophagus enters into stomach. From stomach arises, stomach opens into duodenum. Then duodenum into jejunum, jejunum into ileum, ileum into colon. And then colon rises upwards. This is an upward running part of colon. This is ascending colon. Then at the level of liver, it makes a turn towards the left side of the body. So this bend of the colon here, it is known as hepatic flexion. This bend of colon is known as hepatic flexion. Hepatic flexion. Bend of colon is known as hepatic flexion. And this bend of colon here, it is known as splenic flexion. Splenic flexion. The turn. So here, at the level of liver, this colon makes a turn, it makes a bend, and it crosses the abdominal cavity. It goes from right side towards the left side. So this is transverse colon. Then from the level of spleen, it starts descending down. So that is the descending colon. Then this descending colon enters into abdom this uh, pelvic cavity. And it makes an S-shaped curve. That is known as sigmoid colon. And then the sigmoid colon opens into a tube-like, sac-like structure known as rectum, which opens to the outside to ends, right? So this is the diagram of human elementary canal. So we are discussing about the intestines. So now I told you that our intestines, they are mainly concerned with digestion and absorption of food. Then what is the function of this colon? 
this colon as i told you it contains undigested wastes undigested food material so this colon absorbs water and some minerals or vitamins in our colon there are some symbiotic bacteria those symbiotic bacteria they synthesize some vitamins for example they synthesize vitamin k they may synthesize thiamine they may synthesize riboflavin right so these symbiotic colon bacteria they also synthesize some vitamins and they release them in the colon and colon reabsorbs those vitamins vitamin k thiamine and riboflavin they are reabsorbed by colon so this colon it is mainly concerned with reabsorption of water from the undigested food materials when the undigested food materials leave the small intestine they are in the form of fluid like paste like structure right so when this paste like undigested food material enters into colon colon reabsorbs appropriate amounts of water from it so colon colon maintains a water balance in this undigested food material if these undigested food materials if they get strongly solidified then they will not be able to pass through the colon so they should retain some water they should retain some water so that water balance is maintained by colon so colon reabsorbs appropriate amount of water from undigested food materials it absorbs some vitamins which are prepared by symbiotic colon bacteria right so colon is involved in making these undigested food materials semi solid and then these undigested food materials are stored in colon for some time then they slowly pass from colon into the rectum in the rectum these undigested food materials which are now now having semi solid consistency now this undigested food material is known as fecal matter so rectum stores this fecal matter and rectum may also reabsorb some certain amounts of water from it depending upon the need if a person gets dehydrated then the rectal blood vessels they reabsorb most of the water from this undigested metabol this undigested waste right they reabsorb the water from the fecal matter so rectum stores the fecal matter for some time reabsorbs some water and some mineral salts from it then finally this rectum opens to outside through an anal canal guarded by an anus this anus is guarded by two anal sphincters the opening of anus is guarded by two anal sphincters there is an external anal sphincter and internal anal sphincter internal anal sphincter is involuntary while as external anal sphincter is voluntary right so these anal sphincters they guard the opening and closing of the anus so through this anus then these undigested food material after remaining for some time in rectum then they are finally pushed out through the anus and the person defecates right so that is about the elementary canal so this is the diagram of our elementary canal now we have to see the histology of this small intestine what is contained in the wall of small intestine so we have to cut a section of small intestine so for that purpose i have to draw another diagram but i think this time our time is running out so this is section for today inshallah tomorrow we will see the histology of elementary canal